In the previous video, I have started using the inventory host patterns and also use that minus M ping to validate the connection you know connection is fine and that minus m is in fact the module but you can also run any command let's say i want to run some command ad hoc command on all the servers i can just use minus a and then provide the command name let's say uptime now uptime doesn't need any special privileges so it just runs fine and similarly i can run any command using that minus a option now when i use minus a option it is pretty much ad hoc command this is as good as using ansible as a parallel ssh shell executor because what i'm running are purely shell commands and i can run any command for that matter however it's not ideal i'll tell you why because let's say i want to install something using uh, i can use apt-get install this is procedural you need to know every single command that you want to invoke here now this needs a uh, root access so i need to provide minus b minus b is for become or for sudo or privilege so it is going to do privilege escalation using sudoers by default so if you are you know if you're going to use any command which needs privileged access use minus b as an option and i can validate the package that i've installed by running let's say just which tree and uh, that should give me whether that package has been installed or not i run apt get installed earlier to install tree as a package which is available now i can validate that as well now the way I have been running these commands are pretty ad hoc. This is just running shell commands on a bunch of servers in parallel. Now, the problem with that can be the shell commands are not always item potent. What I mean by that is, let's say I run this user add command uh, once and I'm going to run that same command again and see what would happen. I'm validating that user is present or not first by running a command called as id and uh, that works fine so the user is created i'm going to run the same command again user add now this is not item potent because it fails saying that this user already is present so it's not checking whether the user is present before running itself and that's what i'm talking about as item potency so however if you use ansible modules modules is a way that ansible can manage these entities in an item potent way and it's like a library of tasks or entities or modules that it can invoke to manage a bunch of things and in, in fact ansible has around i if i look at you know the ansible hyphen doc minus l uh, it gives me a list of modules which ansible comes with that's the batteries included approach that ansible has so ansible by default can manage about 1852 at this point of time uh, entities which could which could include system entities such as users and groups to cloud servers uh, it can actually cre go and create some cloud components including ec2 servers or a a any of uh, any other cloud providers as well and this happens through the modules modules is a library of entities that ansible can manage and you can write a code like this in yaml format later as part of roles but you can also invoke those modules directly from the command line using ansible utility for example the same user command that i use instead of using a command or a shell script i'm going to use a module called as user to create that user so all i have to do here is define it's a declarative syntax where i define the state for a specific user so all i have to do is provide the name of the user and the state that it should be in so it's like what i want is what i'm defining here so and i do that through a module called as user so i'm using minus m module and the arguments to that module will be the name of the user and the state of that user i don't care which state it is in right now it's the job of ansible and ansible does it in an important way it actually checked whether that user was present and since it was present it did not change anything however if i provide another user which is not available on the system let's find out what happens this time i see orange output which also shows changed to true which means that it has created the user and if i run this again it is item important unlike my shell script earlier which failed ansible is intelligent enough to know whether that user is present or not it queries for that user if it is there it just skips over those tasks that's what item potence is in action with ansible and that's quite useful one is to uh, you know just you can just rely on defining the state that you want and ansible will worry about whether what action to take and whether to take that action or not and 
Ansible also comes with so many modules. So in this case, I'm trying to install a package by name Vim. So the name of the module that I use here is package and provide the name of the package and the state is present or can be installed. And since that package was already installed, it does not do anything. It just skips over. That's the intelligence that I'm talking about. And then if you want to manage any of these entities, it can manage, let's say, right from cloud providers to databases, to inventory, to messaging, to if you want to integrate with, let's say, your network device or you want to integrate with your cloud provider, you don't have to know the commands. You don't have to understand the APIs that you need to call in order to, let's say, provide a cloud, connect to a cloud provider or it can be a network device or it can be any other system entity. All you do is define the state of that entity, just name of that entity, state of that entity, along with the properties and Ansible will automatically invoke the underlying library, the script and get the job done for you. So once you install Ansible, you actually have an ability to talk to so many or manage so many different entities um, and you can add your own, you know, custom modules as well to uh, that, that you can invoke specific to your own environment too. And that's the power Ansible gives gives you through this module structure. In this video, what I showed you was pretty ad hoc way. In the next video onwards, we're going to start looking at the roles and the playbooks. That is how you start writing your infrastructure as a code.